Hi there, welcome to the new video. So today we'll be going through this algorithm that is called Porto Stemmer. So this is a very prominent algorithm that is part of NLTK library and is used for stemming the words. So stemming is actually a very common and useful technique that people have been using for a long time as a part of pre-processing step for mimicking some level of text normalization. So in this essentially you remove the suffixes from the words. So for example, as we can see, if you have word connect, connected, connecting, connection and connections. So each of the word will be reduced to the word connect. So this is the stemmed version of any of the morphological variations of this word. Although this is not something you will see nowadays that people explicitly do because recent advances in NLP such as BERT and GPT seem to already learn these morphological variations in their initial layers. But I strongly believe this shouldn't refrain us from learning the inner working of this classical algorithm because these days as well, the IR systems what we have still utilize such algorithms for syntactic matching and efficient lookup. So Porter Stimmer is specifically for English language, but the idea that it portrays is deterministic in nature where it has certain set of rules that it processes for every word in hand for reducing it to its corresponding stem. So same set of rules can easily be written for any set of languages. So let's dive into the algorithm now. Okay, so before that, I just want to give a minute or so to make you understand its effectiveness and its usefulness. So as we just saw, like we had connect, connections, connected, so all of that kind of reduces the word connect. So with this, you can easily think of reducing the size of vocabulary over which the searching would take place. So that way your searching algorithm would be relatively faster. So if you normalize that word in the query and you have already indexed the normalized word in the database, so the number of matches your query word will have to do over the set of words in the database would be really less if they were normalized. So that is the first advantage. The second is to reduce the miss rates. So consider a system where you're trying to build a syntactic search engine where you type the word connection, but that word didn't exist as such in the text, but its morphological variation, let's say connection was there. So normalization over here would help you connect both the words, even if the tense and their morphology is different. Also one catch to remember over here is that the word might not make sense after you have applied stemming. So for example, if you have a word, let's say replacement. So after you apply a portal stemmer to this, it outputs the word R-E-P-L-A-C. Also, if you have a word, let's say replace, you'll again get the same stemming word. Or maybe if you have a word replacing, then again, you'll get the same stemmed word. So as you can see, this is not a proper English word that you'll find in dictionary. So it might not make sense in the first place. But if this is supposed to be vectorized or featureized, let's say using bag of words and TFIDF stuff. So you might not bother to what this word actually means. But the score that would be given to this word would be common across all the morphological variations and which is what will matter over there. So with that said, let's start the algorithm. A consonant is a word in a letter other than A, E, I, O, U and other than Y preceded by a consonant. So toy has consonants T and Y this would have s g and g so as you can notice the y in the word toy is acting as a consonant because it is preceded by a vowel but in this case the character y is acting as a vowel because it's preceded by the consonant so they denote consonant by c vowel by v so they define any word to be occurring in this format so what would this mean you would have zero or more c's occurring consecutively followed by a combination of v and c repeating m number of times and then again followed by sequence of v's zero or more times so you can think of this as a regular expression so the m what the authors define over here is called measure of a word so m can take any integer value starting from zero so as you can see m is zero for all these examples because there is no combination of v followed by c that occurs in any of these examples so as you can see this is c c then you have v v and then you have CC. So you did have a CV pair, but M measures how frequent VC pair essentially occurs. So in the second example, if you see, let's take oats. So here you have V, V, C, C. So this is one pair that you get. So that's why M is equal to one in all of these examples. For the third set where M is equal to two, let's take an example of the word Oten. So you have O, A, T, E, N. So you have V, V, C, V, C. So you have two pairs that you get. So that's why M is equal to two. So this is how you calculate measure. So the rule of how you remove suffix would be form of this, where you have some condition 
followed by a suffix s1 which will resolve to s2 if the condition is met so for example if you consider this example so if m is greater than 1 which means the measure is greater than 1 for the character sequence that occurs before the prefix em ent then that would resolve to null so as for the word replacement this is the condition and this is what is termed as s1 so if we calculate m for this the sequences of c and v what we get is c v c c v c so you have two combination of vcs that occur so m greater than one satisfies hence e m e n t resolves to null so this is the output that you get so similar set of rules are essentially what make up porter's stemmer so this was little simple but you might also write some sophisticated regular expressions that involve logical operators as well okay so now they have talked about what can a condition be so it could be of star s which would mean the stem ends with character s and similarly for other letters if it is star v star it means the stem contains a vowel so you can think of this star as zero or more which is usually how we write regular expression you'll have zero or more characters before a vowel occurs then again you will have zero or more characters so this kind of condition is actually mentioned over here okay then you have star d where again the stem ends with double consonants it could be double t double s and all these variations or you could have star o where a stem ends with the particular pattern which is cvc where the second c what you see will not be w x o y so these are all the four patterns that the authors have defined while defining how a porter stemmer should work so now you can use these base conditions to form some complex conditions such as this and this where you are essentially checking if the measure of the word is greater than 1 as well as it ends with s or it ends with t and similarly in the second case you are matching on a word that ends with double character sequences of the same consonant and at the same time this condition is not true which means the double characters that you choose are not double l double s or double z so in this format you can think of making n number of certain rules to derive the stem okay in a set of rules written beneath each other only one is obeyed okay so these set of rules what do you see these are followed in a maximum spanning fashion so for example if you have a word keresis the stem that you'll get from all of these set of rules would be keres because of the sses prefix that occurs over here although s is also something that has a rule over here that maps to null but since the length of the prefix sses is much bigger than a single letter s so that's why that would be preferred hence the longest match okay so there are five steps essentially that happen in Porter's stemmer. Step 1a are these set of rules where if you have any of these prefixes, you map to their respective characters. Such as if we see the example of ties, you have ies as the prefix that maps to the character i. That's why you have ti over here. Then step 2 basically adds another condition that is more of a regular expression format. So somewhere you have the measure of the word, then you have any character followed by vowels, then any character ending with ed. So all of these rules are as a part of 1b. So these are some of the examples. So if the second and third rule of 1b is successful, which means any of these hold true, then the following is done. Then you go about applying all of these set of rules that you see over here. That is kind of a correction rule. Because if you notice, if the original word is conflate, for example, from the previous step you would be getting something as conflat so again this goes and follows the first rule over here converts it back to conflate and similarly for conflated so if conflated was the word from previous step you would be getting something like conflat and then again you match from this and you will be getting conflate over here and similarly for troubled and sized okay then you have step 1c that takes in this rule you have any character followed by vowel then any character ending with y maps to i so if we take this example y is the suffix the condition would be applied on happ so you have a you have some consonants you have some consonants so again this pattern holds true so you convert that y to i so you have happpi so again this is a classical example of a word might not make sense after you do the stemming but if the stemming is done as a part of normalization step so everything will kind of normalize to the same format hence the scoring given by tf idea for any other featureizer method won't be impacted so step one deals with plurals and past participles 
the subsequent steps are much more straightforward okay so as a part of step 2 you have bunch of rules that kind of look for if the measure of the word is greater than 0 if any of the suffix occur you map those suffix sequences to these set of suffix sequences so again all of these are pretty much hard rules that are written so i'll not be going over them so you have these set of five rules that are applied one by one so if you have a vocabulary of 10000 words and you do a suffix stripping over there so these are number of words that get reduced at every step what we just saw and finally the number of words that didn't get reduced were 3650 so now from out of 10000 words you have a unique stem of 6370 so this is the vocabulary reduction that i was talking about which will speed up the searching process okay so yeah we are done with this algorithm now with this we wrap up our first algorithm for the decoding nlp library series in the coming few videos i'll be sticking to nltk and we'll try to pick different methods that are really useful such as pos tagging lemmatization and all of that stuff so make sure you stick around and enjoy these videos and do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified as and when i upload next i'll meet you in the next video bye